Tao overflows. Once again, I am here with another topic. This is one of the very significant and basic question. Each one of us, sometime or the other, ask with ourselves, why am I born? Why is this life? We can give answer this question philosophically. Bhagavad Gita says this, that and so. It is not important. There are two things if I say it in substance to realize why am I born and then evolve. So first of all you have to realize why am I born and then you can evolve to be light onto yourself which is Buddha's message Apodipo Bhava. So know yourself is the first requirement. When you know yourself then you will know what is the purpose of my life. You see a plant, a small plant has something important, a role to perform in the universe. It has something deep within to share it. It is, Raman Maharishi said, the only basic question is to go within. When you go within, you know the you know yourself. Holy Quran says, "Man arfa nafsahu, arfa rabbahu." One who has known himself has known Allah. Aurobindo says we are not aliens nor as strangers join. We are bound to each other by a causeless force. That causeless force is consciousness. The consciousness that is flowing in you is also flowing in every sentient and insentient being. This you have to know. Each one of you has come into existence with a definite purpose and a role to perform. You look at the flowers. There is a rose flower, there is marigold, chrysanthemum, dahlia. Each flower is born with a certain destiny, something to offer to the universe. Blossoming is that it has to offer, but each is blossoming according to its own innerness. A rose blossoms to be a rose flower. A chrysanthemum blossoms to be a chrysanthemum flower. And that too, a white chrysanthemum, a yellow, is born to manifest its yellow color. So too is the rose. No flower imitates the other, but man wants to imitate the other and in that it does not know its inner potentiality. The universe has in the universe, just as each flower has to blossom and in the process of blossoming, it has a specific rule to perform, to spread its specific color and beauty. Even when you look at the roses, there are different roses and when you look at the, the rose, you will realize that yellow rose 
some of them has a strong smell fragrance others have mild so that also depends a yellow rose has a very strong fragrance as compared to the other rose once you know yourself and you have the more you have gone into the depth of our being and in order to go into the beings you have to go through your sense organs that is why in Upanishads one of the most common and beautiful prayer is may I see from the eyes that is worth seeing means there is a physical capacity then there is an inner capability to see which is deeper than the physical one so you have to focus on the inner vision inner hear, hearing the inner quality of each sense organ so when you the know yourself you know then and that too happens through the sense organs you are listening to me you may be doing something else you may be thinking so your listening is not total so airs the sound is entering but you are not listening in one of the pauris nanak speaks on the significance of listening listening is one of the most important inner quality of the ears seeing is the inner quality of the eyes the smell is the inner quality of the eyes that's why this prayer says may i hear that which is worth hearing may i see that which is worth seeing may i smell and it goes on like this if you are go into the depth of your sense organs you will know within who you are and what you want physically emotionally mentally and even economically and once you know only then the process of evolution begins in case of the plants they are unconscious so there is nothing a conflict plants are not schizophrenic that consciously they think of something else and unconsciously they do something else then and only then you will know the purpose of your life how to be aware within 24 hours we spend most of our time we do not have even 10 minutes for us even when you stand up in front of the mirror you are not spending time with yourself the spending time with yourself is a totally different phenomena you are sparing 10 minutes in 24 hours for yourself that time you are completely cut off from everything and you are not bothered about anything simply you are with yourself this will bring awareness in you you remember one thing that you decided that you will get up in the morning 4 o'clock do exercise do meditation 
and what happens so you set the alarm to get up at four o'clock when the alarm rings you turn your side shut up the alarm and then you turn your side and go back to sleep you had made a conscious decision to get up and do the exercise from four o'clock every morning and unconsciously you have abandoned what you have consciously decided does it not happen with you every day you make a decision that I will not do this or I will do this and you forget and you don't do that so there is a conflict between your conscious and unconscious mind you decide to do the exercise you decide to do not to eat this or not to eat late so you can call this is a discipline you set certain goals and you are going against this you decide exercise is very important so consciously you made the decision consciously you made the decision that you will not smoke so what you are doing your unconscious mind is fighting with the conscious mind there is a gap there is a split personality and that creates a situation of schizophrenic it can be that way that you yourself are not supporting your own decision your unconscious mind is not supporting the decision which conscious mind has made so without support within how can you know yourself how can you know what are your hidden talents how you can give yourself to the universe when you will blossom only then when there is no conflict between your conscious and unconscious mind whatever conscious mind decides subconscious mind agrees with it and supports that it is like this the you can take an example you have you made a decision but your spouse is not agreeing with that decision she goes against that or you go against the decision of your spouse so this kind of a constant turmoil tussle goes on between your conscious mind and unconscious mind you remember one thing that you decided that you will get up in the morning four o'clock do exercise do meditation and what happens so you set the alarm to get up at four o'clock when the alarm rings you turn your side shut up the alarm and then you turn your side and go back to sleep you had made a conscious decision to get up and do the exercise from four o'clock every morning and unconsciously you have abandoned what you have consciously decided does it not happen with you every day you make a decision that i will not do this or i will do this and you forget and you don't do that so there is a conflict between your conscious and unconscious mind you decide to do the exercise you decide to do not to eat this or not to eat late so you can call this is a discipline you set certain goals and you are going against this you decide exercise is very important 
So consciously you made the decision. Consciously you made the decision that you will not smoke. So what you are doing, your unconscious mind is fighting with the conscious mind. There is a gap. There is a split personality and that creates a situation of a schizophrenic. It can be that way that you yourself are not supporting your own decision. Your unconscious mind is not supporting the decision which conscious mind has made. So, without support within, how can you know yourself? How can you know what are your hidden talents? How you can give yourself to the universe? When you will blossom, only then when there is no conflict between your conscious and unconscious mind, whatever conscious mind decides, subconscious mind agrees with it and supports that. It is like this, the, you can take an example. You have, you made a decision, but your spouse is not agreeing with that decision. She goes against that or you go against the decision of your spouse. So this kind of a constant turmoil tussle goes on between your conscious mind and unconscious mind. One is masculine, the other is feminine in nature. So it happens everything that a conscious mind decides, unconscious mind has to deny it, there are some people, if they know that you have made the decision, they will deny it. They are not going to do it because it is done by you. So when you, there is no split, there is no situation of schizophrenic, your subconscious mind supports the unconscious mind, there is oneness. And with that oneness, you are going exploring deep within, deep within the ocean of your being. Then you know yourself. And when Quran says, Man arfa nafsahu arfa rabbahu, when you have known yourself, you have known Allah. What is Allah? Allah, Allah is some total of aggregate of all that is sentient and insentient. It is not that Allah is a person sitting somewhere. The entire cosmos, the universe, the Brahman, the planets, the stars, the, the sentient, insentient beings, they all comprise Allah, the cosmos. Then you can know that. You can know the inner treasures. You can know everything that the cosmos is. So you will go deeper within you, know yourself, then you will realize this who you are. The moment you realize your process of evolution will begin and as the process of evolution begins you are light onto yourself. You can share your hidden, your hidden treasures will start expressing themselves into the outer world and will be of benefit to others. Your words, your message, your actions, everything will be for the benefit of humanity. Only this much for this morning and we will come back again with another topic, such an interesting topic which I will take breathing and on that I will not release the topic but it is very significant, it concerns you. Each of this talk is concerning you and it is meant for you. Bye until we meet again. <music>